Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to save for the web using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable tutorials on here. You can also get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And as I mentioned, you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So I'll be using this stock photo for today's tutorial. You can come over here and I went with the large download size. Here's that photo. I'll also be using this poster I designed in the last tutorial. And finally, this email icon, which is like a web icon that I designed here in GIMP. I'll make all of these files available for download in the description of the video, but we're going to start off with this image. So when it comes to saving images or compositions for the web, the two main things you need to think about are the file size as well as the quality. So the reason for this is that when you're uploading to the web, so for example, let's say you're uploading an icon to use on your homepage, or you're uploading an image to use in one of your blogs. The main goal of saving for the web is to optimize for the web. So you want your website to run as fast as possible. And by the way, if you're looking for the best dimensions to use in your social media designs, that's gonna be in my how to create multi-platform content tutorial. So definitely check that out if that's what you're looking to learn about. But back to uploading for the web, the main goal is to upload an image that has minimal quality loss to it, but it's also the smallest possible size it can be with the overall goal of optimizing the performance of the website where you are uploading your images. So the type of file you save your compositions as is going to depend on the composition itself. So when it is an image like this photo here, you're gonna to wanna to save this as a JPEG. And that's also going to apply to this poster which contains images and text. So pretty much anything that contains photos with lots of colors is going to be best outputted to a JPEG for the web. On the other hand, when you have graphics such as this icon, the best file format for that is actually gonna be a PNG file format. So let's come over to this image and we'll start with the JPEG. And let's say we wanted to export this because we wanna use this image in a web banner. So let's just export it at its current file size by going to File, Export As and I'm going to navigate to the folder I wanna use. And let's just name this originalphoto.jpg. So make sure that your file name ends in the extension .jpg. And if you don't wanna manually type that in for whatever reason, you can come over here to select file type by extension and scroll through here to see the various file types as well as select the file type you wanna use. And that will automatically add the extension to the end. So let's export this original photo. I'll hit export. And for the quality, this is the original image quality that came with this image. So let's just keep it at that quality and I'll hit export. So I could technically upload this to the web. Let me come over here to my file explorer. This is that photo. So you can see when I click on it, here is the file size of this. It's 444 kilobytes. So let me minimize this and show you why it's important to scale your image. So for example, let's say we know the web banner dimensions are 1200 by 600. That means I wanna get this image down to those dimensions before I upload this to the web. So that's partially gonna be cropping the image as well as scaling the image. So let's do that now. So if I come over here to my toolbox, I can grab my crop tool. And I do have delete crop pixels selected as well as the fixed aspect ratio. So make sure that's checked. And here I type 1200 colon 600. You guys can type whatever dimensions your banner needs to be. And I also have the allow growing feature turned off. So once I have that set up, I'll click and drag to select the crop area of my image. And let's just put this in place like so. And then I'll crop this. So now we have the 1200 by 600 aspect ratio. But if I come up top here, you'll see the dimensions of my image are actually 2400 by 1200. So I need to scale this down, which I can do by going to image, scale image, and I'll do 1200, hit the tab key, 
and that should automatically update this to 600 so long as I have the chain link icon linked here. If not, you can manually type in 600. And for the quality, I'm trying to preserve as much quality as possible. So I will go with no halo. And the X and Y resolution don't matter because this is going to be for the web. So I'm going to click scale. So now you'll see our image is 1200 by 600. And I'm just going to export this as is right now. So I'll go to file, export as, and we'll name this original photo scaled. Hit export. I'm going to keep the quality at 86 and hit export again. So now when I come over here to my finder, which contains the folder with these photos, here was the original image before we scaled and cropped, so 444 kilobytes. The new image here is now about a quarter of the size, so it's 106 kilobytes. So that's just another step towards reducing the file size of that image. So let me come back and minimize this. The final thing I want to show you is reducing the quality. So to do that, I'll go to File, Export As, and now we're going to change this to Original Photo, and I'm going to add the word Optimized in here and then scaled. So we're going to optimize this for the web. Let me come over here and click export. So the original image quality is 86 on here. What I can do is turn this quality down even more. So I typically go with somewhere between 60 and 80% when I'm reducing the quality of my images. That's usually a good happy medium for reducing the file size without overly reducing the quality. So I usually go with 70. Something else I can do is come down here to advanced options. And so you're going to want to keep optimized turned on at all times, which it usually is by default. And you're also going to want to turn on the progressive format. That's basically how your image is going to load on the web. Progressive just makes your image web pages load faster. So definitely keep that on. Finally, if I come over here to subsampling, this is going to be the final method for reducing quality. So right now it's set to best quality by default. If I click on this, I can go down here to the horizontal chroma halved option, or you can even do the vertical. I'm just going to go with horizontal. What this is going to do is it's going to make colors that look similar to the human eye basically disappear. So it's going to reduce the number of colors in your image without it really being noticeable to the human eye. So there's going to be no visible quality loss usually when you use this option. Sometimes there might be, so if there is, you can keep this set to best quality. But in this case, uh, we can turn that subsampling on to try to decrease that file size even more. And then the DCT method will keep set to integer. That has to do with the precision of the colors. And finally, I'll hit export. So let's come over here back to our folder. So this was the image we scaled down. It's at 106 kilobytes. Coming over here to this new image, you'll see this one is even smaller. So this one is 54 kilobytes. That's because of a combination of decreasing the quality and changing that subsampling option. And now let's double click on here so we can compare the quality of all of these. So here is the smallest option with the lowest quality. If I go to the right, this is the medium option. So the 100 kilobyte option and go to the right one more time. This was the full 444 kilobyte option. So obviously the quality of this one is much better, but it would take way longer for this to load and most people can live with the quality loss you can see in these photos. So let me exit out of here and come back into GIMP. So those same rules are going to apply whenever you are exporting a composition that contains photos and graphics. So let's come over here to the poster. So here we have photos and graphics and we have tons of layers. So what we would do is just go to file, export as, and we can name this multi-character movie poster. Let's make sure we're in the right folder here. I'm going to name this optimized and come over here to export. So again, I can live with 70% quality. And if I really wanted to decrease the size of this, I can change the subsampling to chroma halved and hit export. And now let me pull that up. So here is that final export option. So the quality still looks really good on this despite reducing the quality to 70% and changing that subsampling option. So I'll exit out of here. You can also see that this is 1.92 megabytes. That's because I did not reduce the actual size of this. So I didn't scale this down. If you needed that to be a much smaller size, you can always scale this image first and that would help drastically reduce the file size. So finally, let's move on to the graphic. So this will use a PNG file type instead of a JPEG. So let's navigate over here to that icon. And the reason we want to use a PNG instead of a JPEG is number one, this does not have a background. 
So I've hidden the background layer on here and that's created this transparent background. Also, this has way less colors than a JPEG. So the file size won't get racked up here by exporting this as a PNG. So let's just go ahead and export this as is. So I'll go to file, export as, and I'll name this email icon. Let me first export this as a JPEG to demonstrate. So I'll go .jpeg and come over here and hit export. We'll go with the default values here and hit export again. So the quality was set to 70. Here is that email icon. You'll see the size of this is 24 kilobytes. Also, because we did not have a background on here and JPEGs don't support transparent backgrounds, what's happened is it's replaced the alpha channel with our background color. So in this case, I had mine set to black when I exported it. So this one has a black background. So let's minimize this and now let's export it as a PNG. So I'll go to file, export as, this time we'll go email icon.png. Or of course you can manually select the PNG file extension down here, but I'll hit export and we'll go with the default settings. You can always hit load defaults if you're not sure if you're on the default settings, but I'll click export. And now let's come over here and you'll see that our PNG file now does not contain a background, so it did bring in that alpha channel. Also, you'll remember the size of this was about 24 kilobytes. This one is now 4.67 kilobytes, so it's much smaller. And if I double click on here, there's not really going to be noticeable quality loss, so if I navigate to the left, they pretty much look exactly the same. So that's why we use PNG for graphics. The reason I don't want to use PNG for any of the photos, so this one is 1.92 megabytes. Let's see what happens when we export this as a PNG. I'll go to File, Export As, and we'll just go with, let me double click inside this folder. I'll go with the same name here and hit Export. Go with the defaults, hit Export again. All right, so I'll speed that up, but that took quite some time. Let's come back here to our folder. This was the JPEG version. Now if we come over here to the PNG version, you'll see how much larger this is. It's over 20 megabytes now versus this one was under two megabytes. So this PNG file is about 10 times larger than the JPEG file. And if I were to double click on here and view this and then navigate over to the right to the JPEG, there's not really a noticeable quality difference but the JPEG is about 10 times smaller. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.